So massive action is for one. And two, like you said, you have to grab life. You have to do life, not let life do you. Right, right, right. You know right, what I mean? Right. So get out of the victim mentality. Hello. Yeah. Right? And stop looking for the superhero and get your butt in the phone booth and become the superhero, right? Hello. That is how you control. That's a tweetable. It's a hero's journey. Yeah, it's it's that part hero's of that. That's the part that you bro. actually hit screen record and put that back Come up on, on now, your man. Instagram right now. It's, it's about controlling the narrative. You are the author of your own life. Each day is a blank page. Yeah. Write your story. You know what man. I mean? Share your story, and you're gonna change lives in the process, man. That's all it's about. People relate to that. stories, bro. Dude, that's if I call you, bro, it means I love you, bro. That means I'll go to war with you. Fire, baby. Fire. The reason why you need to know your identity is because when you know who you are, people don't get to define it. For so when I tell you guys yeah. who you have in your circle is important. You, 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 you are listening to the Bro Cement Podcast with Cameron Persaud, Jeff T. Osborne, and Roy Rand. Roy Rand. What's up, you guys? Yo, yo, God, yo, morning. Yo. God morning. God morning. Yo, God welcome morning. to the Bros to Men podcast. Uh, we're excited for another episode. The mm -hmm. love has been continuing to just pour in, yep. and uh, we're, but we, we've got another banger for you guys. <laughs> and cool. so, as usual, it's your boy J O. Yes, sir. Cam, how y'all doing? Good to see y'all again. Roy, aka Dips. Come on, come sir, on, come on. Let them know. All right, all right, so look, we 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 jumping into this next episode. Uh, we've been we've been on a on a good tangent, if you will, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. dropping some some jewels. But there's been a couple of uh, there's been some some, some requests, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so we normally have our, our topics, you know, dialed in what we want to kind of talk about, and then we just kind of let it go. So this is all real, raw authentic conversation as you can tell we don't have notes mm -hmm. i almost thought about being like uncle shay uh and coming in with my mop the trunk yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying like i <laughs> come in with maybe a pot i mean a ipad or something like that right. to be able to come in with my notes so i'm ready mm -hmm. and uh but either either or either way you look at it listen this topic today um is one that i think a lot of us deal with especially mm -hmm. now uh with the pandemic happening and and really a lot of changes needing to take place for a lot of people mm -hmm. you see people who felt like they were able to, uh, you know, they thought they had security in their jobs. Next thing you know, they lost their jobs, yeah. right? And then you stuck at home and you've been with somebody <laughs> for all these years and you look at them like, yo, I, I don't even like you like that. I like you roll over the next morning like, yo, why are you here, right? <laughs> so now the jobs can't even really, right. uh, the jobs can't even really, you know, block people from being who they are. Mm -hmm. And then even in the midst of this, what we find is we found this big old huge transition if you will with people really starting to look at and evaluate is this the lifestyle that i want mm -hmm. is this the life that i want mm -hmm. the thing that i pursued my whole life my career this relationship these things that i'm tolerating in my life is this really what i want and, mm -hmm. and so you have a lot of people shifting and changing mm -hmm. positions and where they want to go in life yeah. and so it's, it's been it's been it's been a crazy time for everybody post pandemic and right. during the pandemic. Right. And so when we talk about this idea, I want I want to drop this on my bros today. When we talk about life mm -hmm. and really going after what you want in life, whether that's going after the relationship, whether that's tolerating a job that mm -hmm. maybe you know financially uh, beneficial in one way, you got relationships that that you know they seem like they were beneficial in one season. Now you're starting to second guess. Ultimately, if I'm gonna drop this question on you, how is it, or how do we make the shift, the shift and the transition from living the life that we're just tolerating yeah. to go at, going after the things you want, regardless of whatever space you're in? Mm -hmm. But how do we, as a human being, make that transition? But maybe even starting off to why do we tolerate these things? in our lives and what are some of the things that stop us from doing it so we gonna open that dialogue yeah. up i'm gonna alley oop it so whoever's gonna take that whether it's you dips whether it's you cam you know i mean i i'll just say right off the bat that i think as humans we gravitate to what's comfortable at that time right mm. so it feels good in that moment that's kind of what we gravitate to so relationships maybe that person was fulfilling the voice that you were looking for at that time right mm -hmm. maybe you needed someone to help uh Maybe expose you to get you out of your box a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, jobs. Maybe you're fresh out of college, you need experience. You know, or maybe you're just switching to a new career field. Yeah. So it's getting you those basics, right? It's laying that foundation for you. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that's important to highlight and to keep in mind is that it's okay to outgrow situations and people. Yeah. And people. Mm -hmm. Say that again, right? And, and people. people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just because this relationship has been great for my twenties doesn't mean it's still serving me as I move into my thirties. Right or my mid thirties because this job was great for me 
uh, coming out of college mm -hmm. doesn't mean that this is where I need to spend 20, 25, 30, 35 years of my life. Yeah. So I think that's one thing that's important uh, to mm -hmm. keep in mind is that it's okay to be filled for the time being. It's okay for you to receive what you needed from that situation the time being. But I also think it's important to keep in mind, you could outgrow people and situations and it's okay to look better in order to progress your life. What do you think, dude? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to GOAT, Stephen Covey, mm -hmm. you know, um, start with the end in mind. There you go. So if you oh, don't have cold. an mm -hmm. actual goal or destination, then you're not going to do nothing. You're just kind of, you know, going by the whirlwind, wherever mm -hmm. the world takes you, wherever maybe your peer group takes you. But if you have actual goals and know what you want to actually do, then now you know who you can get around. You know what you got to do, what you got to read, mm. what you got to do, what habits what lead measures you have to do yep. every day. So I think right. that's the first thing. Then once you have those goals, and some of us, like us three, we got big dreams. Like right, yeah. um, when you look at it, it, it it's a mountain. Mm -hmm. It ain't something you can do in one, five, 10 years. It's a 20 year goal. And so a lot of people get scared of those goals because they don't chunk them down in their mind. They don't do the actual the math and just saying, you know, I'm going to just do this, this, and this mm, every day. They right. just look at the big goal. Maybe they're on Instagram seeing other people who are crushing that goal already and they don't think they can be mm -hmm. to the level of that person, not understanding that that's their highlight reel. Yeah, that's not. Right. right. Uh, those are the results already. That's the results already. <laughs> right. We know the results are really made in those mundane, boring moments of doing the stuff you don't right. really want to do. Right. Right. And then the third thing is, um, Sometimes we're held back by success, right? Oh, talk talk about that. What you mean? So let's say I want to be a doctor, but I hop into the medical field. I become a paramedic, and then I become a fireman. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, I'm making real good money. Maybe you know, high six figures. Like it's not so OT. bad. I could, I could stay it's here. It's not so for, bad. I could right. stay right here, and then we lose sight of that vision. And that's what Jeff, you call golden handcuffs, yeah. right? And I actually have a uh, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Dr. Klaus Hecht. He was a fireman, and God just shook him up. Was like, no, 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 you were supposed to be a doctor, and then yeah. he went back to school yeah. and became a doctor. Mm. And sometimes we lose sight of the end goal because we had some success, and everybody else patted yeah, us on the right, back for that right, success, right. because we love to be, you know, good yeah. job, you know, you got that good job. Yo, you and said something that, that's gold, that talking day. about Stephen Covey, bro. That's, uh, -huh. uh seven, was it Seven Habits of Highly Effective seven, People, right? First book. Bro, right. that, like, that book I was I think the, it was the first book we all started. As a group, yeah, yeah, as a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, that book set the foundation, I think, for how we think now, yeah. right? Because yeah. we mm -hmm. just built off of that be book. proactive. And he was also the person that said, you should live your life with your funeral in mind. And a lot of people don't a lot of people don't talk think about, about that, that yeah. right? So what he says that typically our funeral isn't something that we live our life thinking about, right? right. But he says you don't want to. Exactly. Right. But he says you should live your life in a way where you can almost visualize the things people will say about you while you're lying there in your coffin, right? Um, so live your life in a way that training people or making people observe yeah. how you want to be viewed yeah, 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 at yeah. the end result of your life, right? Yeah. So if you're saying if if my dream is to, I want people to say, he loved God, he was hardworking, he had integrity, he was yeah. honest, he was a man of character, he never let obstacles or challenges get in his way, right? Right, right, right. right. That's how I'm going to live my life yeah. so that when my final day comes, that's what people view me as, yeah. right? So with that in mind, coach, <laughs> right? I call you coach because you're yeah, our yeah, personal yeah, yeah. coach oh, along oh. with the thousands that you coach as well. What are steps that we can take to live our life in such a way. Because like Dip said, it's easy to have a huge goal, oh, right? Right. But in order to fulfill that and obtain those goals, mm -hmm. we have to chop it in bite-sized pieces, right? Life isn't just one big quarter. It's like quarter one, yeah. quarter two, quarter three. As yep. athletes, that's how we view yeah. things, yep. right? Yep. One quarter at a time on the field, it's one play at a time. Yep. That's how we win the game. It's one play at a time. It's one drive at a time. We don't just focus on the end score. We focus on the steps we're going to take to get there and to be yep. successful. Yeah. So as a coach... How do we create these plays so that we can live our life in such a way with that end result in mind mm -hmm. uh, for people to ultimately see the way we lived our lives and the impact that we live? Tangible. Tangible, get, get right? Oily. Yeah, get yeah, yeah. oily. Come on, on bro. Hey, well, look, I tell people before you even, before you can even, see, we always want, we want, we want the answer so quick. Give me the answer. Give me the answer. Mm -hmm. Give me the answer. But if you're looking for the answer without understanding the origin, you're going to, you're going to lose yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. If you, if, if. 
If we are constantly thinking about, just give me the answer, just give me the answer, but you're not even understanding the origin of where your thought pattern came from that caught you mm -hmm. in this rut, yeah. you're going to repeat it no matter what. And so the goal is when we're trying to change our lives is to really go after the mindset that's holding us back and the mindset that's stopping us or keeping us in tolerating lifestyles or relationships or things that we really don't love. Mm -hmm. I tell all of my clients that the awareness of is the freedom from. Ooh, say it more time. The, the awareness, awareness. Yeah, that, that was. Uh, we yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Let me, let me pause on that real quick. Yeah. Yo, check it, check it. The awareness of uh -huh. is the freedom from. Ooh. Okay. Oftentimes, and I feel like how the enemy, Satan, how he gets us caught up is he wants us to be oblivious or act like we're oblivious of the things that are really holding us up. So we go through our life pretending like we don't have an issue when we know it's there all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not until I become aware of what's holding me back that I can actually become free from that. Ooh, bro, so, so... <laughs> hey, yeah. because this, this, and this is why I'm saying this is because if we don't understand and have an awareness of the mentality, the mindset, the, the, the ungodly belief, if you will, that holds me back, mm -hmm. then I'm just going to continue to do it. So another question I ask my, my clients is what are you pretending not to know? <laughs> Come on. If I'm, I, I don't know why, you know, I, look, hey, uh, maybe a woman who's like, hey, look, I, I just hate that when, you know, I'm in this relationship and they just keep taking from me and they keep doing this and they keep doing that. And I'm, I know that I'm not mm -hmm. being honored mm -hmm. and I just don't know why I stay. Yeah. They want the answer. But I asked them the question, well, what are you pretending not to know? You know, it reminds me like one of the things I just read recently was that if you go and ask someone uh, a question, for example, right? Yeah. I'm going through A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. Should I leave this relationship? The coach said, you know the answer already. You know yeah. the answer. You're just looking for confirmation. confirmation. You know the answer. See, bro, but this is what I'm saying. We, we, we pretend like everybody else has the answer for our life, mm -hmm. even though they're not in our situation. Mm -hmm. They're not going through what we're going through. So going back to answering your question, what is the first step to being able to shift things? It's number one, becoming aware of what it is that's stopping you. Mm -hmm. One of the things that stop us uh, bigger is negaholics. Mm. Tell us what, what's a negaholic, Dog, bro. Negaholics are the people, <laughs> bro. Negaholics are the people in your life who say you shouldn't do this, you can't do, do this. That. You know, you know, they're they're trying to get you to play it safe, mm -hmm. acting like they, they really care for you. Yeah. But what they're really doing is they're trying to get you to live down and, and, and kind of lower yourself mm. so that you don't quote unquote get hurt. They're yeah. risk adverse. In other words, mm. they're the people who uh, would rather have the comfortability of having stability, even if the stability is toxic, yeah. rather than going after the unknown that's mm -hmm. out there. And so play it safe, uh, playing it safe. Yep. And so this is why I asked the question, you know, the first thing that stops us from really going after what we have, we surrounded ourselves with a whole bunch of negaholics. Mm -hmm. And you said something, Cam, in the car that we talked about as we were discussing mm -hmm. this. Hey, were you in traffic for an hour and a half? You right, can, you yo, can yo, all this stuff. Ain't no joke. <laughs> right. So when you when you are you are you mentioned something, and Dips, you can weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. But bro, you said you get to a place where you have to train people. Mm. Of your ex. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm looking at it, or somebody listening, like, hold on, dog. Ain't nobody gonna train me. I'm not a dog. I'm not yeah. a pet. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you ain't going. This, this ain't one of those. When you talk about training people, but what do you elaborate on that? Because I think that's huge. So I, I remember, shoot, I can't remember the book it was, but there was a, a saying in the book. The author, I probably read this twelve years ago, and it stuck with me. And what he said was that people will only do what you allow them to do in your life. Mm. You allow people to hurt you, mm. right? You allow people to lie to you, right? You allow people to disappoint you. People cannot hurt you without your permission. permission. Oh, you see what I'm saying? So, so basically, what he's what he's saying is that you train those people, or better yet, you show those people what you will and will not tolerate right. in your life. So, like you said, there might be this dog going that's like, I mean, I'm not about to train me. I'm not a dog, right? Mm -hmm. No, but what I will do. Is cut you off when you begin to exhibit behavior, <laughs> talk about that. thoughts, or energy yes, sir. that I will not allow in my life. Mm -hmm. So before you know it, as you repeat this pattern of er, stop right there, we're not having that. Right. You learn real quick. I mean, you can't go around dips talking that negative because yeah. he gonna cut you off real quick, sure. right? So when you come around me, you better be talking about something, doing something, talking about ideas, not people. Something that we can build on, right? Something substantial mm -hmm. because the moment. That you go off track with that, er, conversation's over. So what I hear you saying is you're saying you got to set boundaries. That's it. 
of what you will and what you won't tolerate when it comes to conversations, That's when it. it comes to everything in life. Everything in life. Everything in and life. When they cross the line, dig a ditch. <clears throat> yeah. And it's not even like <clears throat> to be like rude or mean. It's just letting you know like this line is not going to be crossed. Yeah, we're not blurring lines. Yeah. There's very clear distinctions here, right? So, with like for example, there was a point in dips in our life, and you were right there with us where. We're not going out anymore. The only time we're going to go out and right. celebrate and have a drink, we're celebrating something, right? We're not going out because we're born on Saturday night. <laughs> right. We're not going to go spend money and get bottle service. If you yeah. see me out having a good time, we're celebrating something, something right? We accomplished some type of right. goal. Right. They said ain't no 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 business celelebrating being broke. You're celebrating being broke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Exactly. So you know what happened when people start hitting us up? Hey, we're going to table tonight. Now we're good. We're in these books, right? Or we're going to finish reading this up. Or me and Dips are going to work on this. Yeah. So they stopped inviting you know what I mean? Yes, you sir. teach people. It's like, oh, should we invite Dips? Nah, man, he he locked in, bro. Cam right. Cam's not with that no more. So again, people begin to realize what you do and what you won't do, right? What you will accept, what you won't accept, and that goes in relationships as well, men and women. Mm-hmm. So it's women say he keeps cheating on me. You know, he keeps doing this. Well, why you keep well, allowing him to cheat? Why you yeah. doing? Or vice versa? Or vice yeah, versa? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? He's not. He's not honest. He's not a person of integrity. Why do you allow this type of energy and behavior into your life? Mm. Because you should have put it into it the very first right. time, right? Because the first time you allowed it, the second time you allowed it. At this point, it's like I'm gonna do what I want to do. Okay, so then I'm, I'm gonna throw this to you, yeah. Dips. I love how you said that. That people only treat you how you allow them to. Mm-hmm. You giving them permission. You giving them permission. Yeah. So in your in your case and where you're at, this I'm a, I'm gonna toss it to you. Why do we allow people to treat us in ways that are 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 personally? It's not our preference. It's not what we desire. But why do we tolerate negaholics? Why do we tolerate people doing that in our lives? But people are afraid to be lonely. They're afraid to mm. not have a relationship right now. Not to have friends right now. They need to have a, a circle around them. And even if it's a bad circle, at least it's a circle, right? Wow. And so a lot of people won't tell, you know, us, we hold each other accountable. accountable. Like, right. Like, right. It, I could be sitting down with my head down telling Cam, yo, this happened with with this girl and she this and that. And Cam, he'll listen. Right. And then he'll pause and be like, you done? Okay, we, <laughs> what, right. what did you do right. or did not do to cause right. that to happen? Right. If it was on that level, why were you even there? Why didn't mm. you walk away? Mm. And even us as impeccable men, sometimes we make that mistake a little bit, right? Maybe I should work on it. Um, but at the end of the day, I think you have to be clear about your non-negotiables. I love that, bro. You got to have your non-negotiables. Like, Mm -hmm. if this happens, I'm peacing out. Right. And you have to stand on it. Because if you don't stand on it, it won't be respected. Woo! Mm. And people... Stand for something. Yep. Come people on People will... They'll, they'll test it. Mm-hmm. They te- they'll Dog, test it. They will test, <laughs> they will test your loyalty it. to hey, your commitment. Go ahead. Go right. ahead. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay. Give us an example of what that testing might look like. That testing might look like, yo, don't go out to the club and and do this this and this i'm you know i'm not going to be with anyone who's always at the club mm. who's who's that, that's just not me mm-hmm. uh you, you know you're being jealous mm-hmm. go Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you go, don't call me, don't text me. Right. I'm done. Right. And that that is a non-negotiable. Um at the time it was a non-negotiable. And so you know, if someone's cheating, if that's not a non-negotiable for you, and I say it should be for everyone, absolutely, then cool, yeah. you could work it out. That's dope. But hey, if someone breaks a non-negotiable, don't lie, don't cheat, mm-hmm. don't steal. You gotta go. Those are three of my non-negotiables. Yeah, yeah. But if you, you break a non, but if you break a non-negotiable to yourself, or Ooh. when you break a non-negotiable that you set up, you actually start losing trust for yourself. Yeah. You start trusting. You stop trusting yourself that you can make it happen or stand on that on that mm-hmm. line of mm-hmm. where you stand. But you're not only so you're not only projecting something to people outside of you. You're also projecting something to yourself. So I want to mm-hmm. touch on that yeah. real quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's integrity and integrity. If you look at the 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 etymology of it, it means to be whole and complete. Mm. And so we give our words to things all the time. I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold this non-negotiable. Right. Whenever you 
uh, give your word to something and you aren't congruent with that word in your actions, mm -hmm. you're breaking down that completeness. Ooh. And if you look at like a will, willpower, yes, right? Sir. If you look at a will, when the will is in integrity, it does its job. It mm -hmm. rolls, mm -hmm. right? But when it's not in integrity, you take some spokes out of the middle of that wheel, <laughs> right. it won't be able to do its job. It's going to get wobbly, so it's crack under there. pressure. Yeah, yeah. So in order to stay whole and complete with yourself and be a powerful person in self, you need to be whole and complete with your word and be in integrity at all Ooh, times. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. And I'm thinking about something right now because I remember a couple of weeks ago, I kind of want to ask you to take that point from a different episode and tied in this and kind of show how everything is congruent, right? What yeah. you do in one area affects the other. Mm -hmm. um, you spoke about that gap in a lot of people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. And and how we and how you coach to address maybe where you want to be to where you are and that space in between. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to focus on dating and I'll let you kind of throw it into whatever other yeah. area. Mm -hmm. But often, you know, or a lot of times, I feel like people are scared to step out and go get maybe what they feel they truly deserve mm. because they feel like there's a fear that I'm incapable of achieving that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they settle for what's in front of them opposed to being willing to discard that and go after what's yeah, truly right. prime, yeah. right? So for example, a lot of times we've heard these stories of people in relationships mm -hmm. and they'll say, I know I deserve better, but maybe I can coach that person to being what I want them to be opposed to just going and getting the person that's already that person that you desire, mm. right? So why do we settle in those situations opposed to instead of getting the job I truly feel I want and deserve, I'll settle for this and then maybe I could work my way up or maybe one will fall into my lap. Why are we so afraid to let go of what we currently have yep. to go get what we know we truly deserve, what we truly desire? Why do we settle in those situations? Oh, bro, that's, that's a loaded, that's a loaded yeah. gun. We hate a void. Yeah, it's like point. what is, we we just like we're just so afraid to just let go of what we're currently comfortable and holding on to. Yeah, to go get what we know will make us truly happy. You know, like, there, why are there, we selling for that mediocrity? But bro, there's a difference between. I think this is important to understand. There's a difference between knowing mm -hmm. and actually believing. Mm. Yes. There's a big, there's a big yes. gap between that, right? Yeah. So I can know what's best for me. I can know what I really want to have. I can know that I deserve better. I can know that there's better out there. Mm -hmm. But until I truly believe it in me, now it becomes a belief system. Mm -hmm. Now it goes from beyond just head knowledge down to my heart saying, no, no, I believe that I deserve better. And your belief sparks an action. Yeah. So watch this. If I know our car is outside mm -hmm. and I want to get to my car. I can sit right here like, oh, I know the car's outside. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I know the car's outside. Know the, I know the car's right, outside. Right. But if I truly believe the car's outside and I know I got to go somewhere, mm -hmm. that belief of knowing the car is out there is going to incite an action for me to go and go out to the car to leave where I need to go. Mm -hmm. And so I can sit here and know that I have need to have a better relationship. Mm -hmm. But until you believe that you're worthy of that relationship and your worthiness is not tied to anybody else giving you permission to do it, mm -hmm. then you start changing the game. Mm -hmm. And so... I think we live we live in a society now where we need the cosign of everybody else yes. to go after what we know we're supposed to have in our life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what holds us up because I want all of these different people to agree with the decision. That agreement holds us I, up bro, so much. 100%. Like we don't want to take action until we know we got agreement from others. 100%. And so what you'll do is, is, is you'll call five or six different people. <laughs> you agree, right? <laughs> to get your agreement when you know right. darn well that that's what you're supposed to do. Right. I don't. Yeah. And this, the thing that frees you from that is knowing that when you got God, He's already giving you the cosign. You need agreement from mm. the person, mm -hmm. but from the person, man. And so God says, "I've come to give you life, the, give you life, the person, yeah, more abundantly, the person." <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I think that um, the idea is is we're looking for situations and scenarios to. To try to give us the green light for why we need to go, or I feel like we're so we're so caught up in trying to validate why we want something. Mm, yeah. And so, so now what we do is we're so afraid in this society to say, I want it because I want it. We have to now turn that want into a need in order to justify it. Mm -hmm. And so if it's like, okay, um, you know, I know I wanna, I wanna 
I want to be in a relationship where it's honorable and trustworthy, got their stuff together. But how do we flip that instead of not being comfortable with just saying we want it? We go, man, you know what? I need somebody because I'm going to be building my life and I'm going to be going where mm -hmm. I want to go. Mm -hmm. And so you start trying to make all of these qualifications or justifications for why you want what you want instead of just saying, I don't like this relationship because they're not treating me the way that I want to be treated. Ooh. So are people... And I kind of believe this, but I want y'all to to talk about it. Are people not scared of failure, but they're scared of what other people will say or think of them if they fail more often? Uh, yeah, I, I think we at, at the core, our fear of doing anything in life is our perspective of what other people are going to think about us. us. Putting yourself out there, that vulnerability. But the, and, it, <laughs> and it keeps coming right back around. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're terrified to go after it. And dic and here's a question. This is something that, that I had to think about, and it could be an easy layup, but we're so afraid of what other people are going to think about us when we go after what we want, mm -hmm. that we will actually live a life below the standards or below what God wants us just so that we can fit in, fit in. just so Ooh. that we can be comfortable, just so that we're not the, scared of the separation. We're scared of the separation. And you mm -hmm. said it, we're afraid because we want uh, uh, validation. We, we want validation. We want a circle. We just want someone to be there, and then it's gonna get worse. So when you get that person who comes down and says, "I'm gonna make a hundred million rolling up companies and selling them," mm -hmm. you be like, you you start to hate a little bit, right? Because guess what? If that person chased their dreams and they become successful, it's like holding up a big mirror in your face. Like, uh, why, why didn't you do come what on, you dips. were supposed to do? Yes, sir. So sometimes people will hate on you or be negative because your success makes them take a deeper look at themselves. Brother, hold on. Take oh, a moment that, and hey, say that's, la, marinate on that. Yeah. You said that sometimes or most of the times your success becomes a mirror. For other people. For other people. To so evaluate now, their own progress, their own success, where right. they're at in life. And if you're in the same circle, that's real that's tough, real right? Tough. Because now you're like, I had the same resources and access that they had, right? I came up with this dude. So why is it that we start the race here and now he's up here? He's already well, we do that, but we don't play no games. It's like, Jeff, uh, uh, we're like, mm -mm. No, yeah, yeah, we it, come it up. Dips, right. So with us, as we, as we keep going up, so we take on that responsibility and keep going up. But imagine not doing anything right? and seeing people. I remember, um, you know, the most like sad summer of my life is when like all my friends were going to D1 colleges to play basketball, mm. UCLA, Loyola Marymount. And I was, I'm going to take classes at Mount Sac. Right, right. <laughs> I was so hurt, bro. Mm -hmm. I was hurt. Ain't nothing against Mount Sac. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. not my nature to hate, but I can see why someone would hate on someone else because yeah. I was hurt in that moment. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You know, I got to get it together. Go to go to paramedic school. Mm -hmm. I, you know, figured it out. Mm -hmm. But imagine seeing someone, someone that you know you're smarter than, better than, just as good as. Mm -hmm. crushing it but you got those golden handcuffs on and you ain't doing nothing man. okay okay so that, that brings up yeah, a good point dog, right so so let's bringing up these golden this right idea of golden handcuffs now we know what that is right so let's let's segue to that though because what you're talking about is the 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 period of having to go back and reevaluate where you're at and maybe change that initial game plan that you had see i posted something on instagram last week right and what i said was that you could lose a couple games and still make it to the championship. Facts. So what I'm saying is you could take some Yo, L's. Cam. You could take some L's. And still win. Come on. So one of the things I love about sports, bro, is that when you interview a coach or you interview a quarterback after a loss, right, what do they say? We lost to the better team. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back. The plan's already in motion. Yeah, 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 We're yeah, going to yeah, go yeah, back. Yeah. We're out coached in this We're going to go watch some film, yeah. see what the mistakes were that we made, and we're going to be back next week. That's what I love about sports because it's not, until you're in the playoffs, it's not a one-game season, mm -hmm. right? It's not a one-loss game over, season over. Yeah. You have that opportunity to go back and reevaluate some things. Mm -hmm. So my question is for, we start with you and then Dips can chip in, is when you're in that reevaluating phase, I think one of the toughest things is to just start. As you mentioned, yeah. you're doing 100 push-ups. The hardest one's the first one, not the 100th one, yeah. right? So any type of change, I think we can agree, requires massive action. You right. have to take some type of action. It's not enough to sit on the couch, 
write the plan out, put it down on the coffee table and expect it to happen. Now you got to get your butt up and go make it happen, right? Yeah. So when you're in that reevaluating phase and it's like plan A didn't work, now it's on this, right? Or now it's plan A.2 or whatever it is, yeah. right? We're creating, we're reevaluating it. What steps does one take to just be able to to take the massive action? You know, for yeah. me, I think it's being able to, to see the entire picture. Yeah. 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 Um, like we said, keeping the end in mind. Right. What do you see yourself doing five years from now, 30 days from now, and not just today? Because I think you can get caught up in the moment. When you're caught up in the moment, it's like, man, I can't do that. Yeah. Right. 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 Well, I think you said something, bro, and we talked about this. I think the first step is is breaking golden handcuffs in your life. And this is why I keep saying, we keep saying golden handcuffs, but when we talk about golden handcuffs, essentially what that is, is the golden handcuffs are the things that you have handcuffed yourself to in your life, whether it's comfort, whether it's the job that you have that pays you an X amount of dollars, you're making a lot of bread, mm -hmm. and now you have a nice car, mm -hmm. now you got a mortgage, now you got, you know, club memberships and right. and you got an expensive sneaker habit you know what i'm right, saying I'm, right. just, I'm just saying right right, right. and right. so now the job that you hate the field that you hate the life that you hate you have now these golden handcuffs if you will because the lifestyle that you're not happy with is providing things in your life that give you little amenities the little, mm -hmm. little perks and things like that so we'll tolerate a job that we can't stand because we're making six figures mm -hmm. we'll tolerate that relationship that we're in because there's some benefits that are there and so if i'm going to be able to step into the new direction i have to be willing first to sever the golden handcuffs and really be able to break those i'll give you a case in point yeah. when when um a couple years ago, two years ago, two and a half years ago, when I decided to, to shift again mm -hmm. from, from just a corporate church world and relaunch my coaching practice, we were already living in an area where all the homes are million dollar homes, mm -hmm. brand new Land Rovers making high six figures. We mm -hmm. good, like we mm -hmm. good, good. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming into the room and I told Nadia, I said, babe, I would, I, I, this ain't it. This is not me. There's something inside of me. And Nadia kept telling me this ain't our life. This ain't our life. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not aware of it as a, as a man, as a provider, you can get frustrated. Like, what you mean this ain't our life? Right. Like, we living better than we ever lived. Do you remember how we used to live? Like, you can go right. whatever store and buy it. Right. And I remember I used to get on her head about it until I had this uh, a friend of mine. And you know, uh, Leanne, she said mm -hmm. something to me. She says, she calls me Jeffrey. She goes, Jeffrey, what you don't understand, when a woman begins to complain about the lifestyle that they're in, it's not that a lot of them are complaining. It's that they're telling you and reminding you this isn't the vision you told me when we first got together. So I, in that moment when she told me that, it was like when God, Dr. Mosman Rose says when, when, when God created a woman, a woman is a multiplier. If you read in the Come Bible on. and Proverbs, here's a crazy thing about it. People don't understand. In the Bible, God, the men would make the money. Go take or make the money. They would buy the produce. They would do all that. Then the wives and the daughters would go to the marketplace and the wife would sell and multiply mm -hmm. what the man has already brought in. That's mm -hmm. why the Bible says that she has to be great and savvy in the marketplace because women are multipliers. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, is when you're in a season of settling and you're with a real one, I'm talking about a real wife. Right. Like, you know, mm -hmm. she like, well, why you only give me Gucci <laughs> when I want Dior? Or, right, right. Or, 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 you know, it, it could be vice versa. But I'm just talking in, in my perspective. My Nadi was like, yo, this ain't it. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, why are you being ungrateful? She said, no, this ain't it. And so I had to evaluate my life and say, are there golden handcuffs that I'm attached to, this lifestyle, versus being in the fulfillment pocket that I was in? And so I had to just be willing to say, you know what? I would rather make less for a season and be in alignment with who I'm really called to be yeah. than to just flourish in that. And the fear of losing a lifestyle, a quote-unquote lifestyle, to bring you fulfillment is what I believe holds a lot of us back. Facts. Mm. I, I mean that's crazy because I think what it what it, you just hit on is how important it is to have people in your lives, whether it's a partner, a brother, mm -hmm. whomever, to remind you of the vision that you have for yourself. Yeah. One hundred percent. Because yeah. we will settle when things get comfortable, right? I had this, like you said, I had this big million dollar dream mm -hmm. when I was only making thirty thousand a year. Now I'm making eighty. I'm doing all right. It's like sure. no, no, no. What happened to the million dollars? Eighty thousand is nothing close to the million. That, that ain't even it. And <laughs> right. you settled. Right, you settled for it. But the other thing is too. I think it's important. And Dips and I talk about this a lot. There's a difference between taking advice and taking counsel. Yeah. And a lot of people have to understand this. So I'm gonna break this down because yeah. this was wow. key for me when I learned wow. this. Yeah. So advice is, I'm gonna go ask my friend, who knows nothing about writing books. 
and say, I want to write a book about A, B, and C. What do you think? A friend who's never written a book is going to say, bro, are you crazy? Yeah. You know, what do you know about writing books? Um, how are you going to do that? Right. Going to school, right. working, right. family, right. family commitments, right? right? That's advice. They're yeah. giving you advice about something they have no knowledge on. Mm. Yeah. Seeking counsel is, I'm going to a best-selling author. Okay. And I'm saying I want to write a book. Boy, you about to make. They're going to give you studio. a different perspective and say, "Look, you want to write a book? You can write a book." I was in school. I had three kids. I was working two jobs. I had a wife. I had a sick mother, and I still wrote a number one best-selling book. That's the difference in advice and counsel. Yeah. So, if I want to reevaluate my life, and I want to have, you know, move to a new area, I want to make a career change. Why am I going to talk to someone who's been unhappy with their life for the last 30 years and settled Man. for a job that they can't stand waking up and going to every morning mm. and they're just living, I'm sorry, they're just existing Exist. and they're not living, right? They're not actively trying to plan their life. They're not yeah. actively designing what their life's going to look like. I'm just rolling with the punches, whatever comes my way. Yeah. That's the difference in existing and living, right? Yeah. So going and getting counsel would say, bruh. You switched careers two years ago. You, you transformed it. Yeah. You were in a similar space that I'm in now. You're flourishing. Tell me what it takes. That is the uh, difference in getting old, advice dude. and getting counsel, right? You're in working full time. You want to get a master's degree? Don't talk to someone who only has an associate degree. Go talk to yeah. someone who's doing who's nice doing degree. it. Who got the master's while working full time and a kid and a oh, husband? Man. That's the difference, right? So. What I want to ask you, because you're a coach, and to me, coaching is receiving counseling. You coach folks as well. Yeah, she does the dip. I want to hear what yeah, you Yeah, so I'll right, go with dips first. Yeah, yeah, So, dips, tell me, how do I get around people where I can find the counsel? Because a lot of times people will say, well, I don't know anybody that's doing what I want to yeah. do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know any millionaires. <laughs> hey, right? and I will say this. The dips, you are notorious. <laughs> right. For getting around folks, taking pictures like, hey, dog. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Well, yeah. Be like, check this out. He's shooting the you wish you were Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm like, I'm like, like, like how about that Arnold? Yo, yo how you right. get by Arnold Schwarzenegger? You over there just cheesing. Right, because we know as people who've been in entrepreneurship. Right relationships are huge Dude, and a lot of times it's about who you know not necessarily what you know right because if you can get around the right people they'll teach you what you need to know in and you order and to you, be successful and you accomplishing things that like bro you on a you beat out my one of my goals you on a ted talk yeah. you're like hey bro so <laughs> right, right, right. i gotta call today i'm be speaking gotta, 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 <laughs> so we'll, so we'll talk about yeah, that yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's so gold dude yeah, yeah. how do how do, how we, do you form those relationships yeah, bro like how do you get around good. those people first off people don't find those people because when you get in the room like i had a friend who i said you need to get around me cam and jeff and mm -hmm. stokes and he was like, yo, y'all, yo, y'all getting money. I can't really afford to hang out with y'all. Like, you know, I don't feel comfortable. And I said, no, that's the reason why, why you need yeah. <laughs> So I think sometimes yeah. people feel uncomfortable around certain people. Uh, the thing is, when you have the vision to be that top dog, that owner, that winner, whatever it is you're chasing, that identity, yeah. but you're around for lack of better terms, normies, people who are just mid and average, it's hard because you think like those people. Yep, yep, yep. But you don't want to get around those people because you feel like, yo, I'm not worthy. I don't make that money. I can't, you know, I can't get around those people. But actually, when you get around those people, Brother. they're going to resonate with you because they think like Talk. you. Ooh. Right? Talk. They don't Come think on. like the normies. And so it's actually easy to connect with them when you think like them. You get around, you know, you start telling little jokes. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and you know, this threw me off. I went to a seminar one time and this billionaire. What, one thing, every single billionaire I've ever talked to asked me the same question. Mm -hmm. What makes your business different than everybody else's in your market? Right. And I was like, yo, why do billionaires keep asking me that? Right. Um, so he asked me that question. I didn't even have a business at the time. I was there. <laughs> you was called, you know, I, was right. head, right. I was like, yeah, I got a, a CPR business where we teach healthcare providers how to provide CPR. <laughs> right. And right. he's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, what makes your business different? And so I sat at a table with this billionaire and he was like, man, you're extremely intelligent, extremely smart, very well spoken. He was like, you're going to do big things. And it threw me off. I was like, I met this dude today. Why does he see me like that? But 
a lot mm. of family and friends don't see me like that. And Yo, you know, a prophet go. has much honor. Come on, bro. Don't Come on. accept Come on. In, his own, you know, in his own house own. with his own right. friends. And it's not even like they're hating, it's just they can't see the they can't see it. Bro. But he's been there, he's done that so he can see it. So that's those Bible, people come on. That's Bible, bro. Those people relate with like you that. Right. more than you relate with the people you grow up with. 100%. So when you get around them, you're just gonna connect, right? Um, um they call it the the veto, the top officer. Mm -hmm. So you get around them and, and just be yourself and you're gonna notice you have so much in common and they're gonna see you like they like they were when they were coming up. Mm -hmm. And they're just gonna love it. Bruh. And you just ask questions and they wanna pass down the knowledge. They want to. Shoot that that's, email. No, shoot that's that all DM. go. Go for it. Oh, like shoot your shot is what freaking, shoot your man, shot. literally this that, morning man. meeting up with, with Jay I was into the radio, right? Yeah. And they were playing this clip of Tyler the Creator. And he was saying that he ended up at some party. Like he was like, "Bro, I don't even know how I got there. Somehow <laughs> I got in the door." He was like, "I got inside." You know, Tyler Crater is right. Yeah. He was like, "Bro, I was starstruck." He's yes. like, "Mark Wahlberg's walking around." He was like, "I see all these stars." He was like, "Then I see this goofy looking black dude walking." He just had like this weird jacket on. This hat face was covered up. Ended up being Denzel, right? He was like, "Oh man!" So he's like, "I'm starstruck." So the point, or at least what I took away from that, was that. The way you feel about yourself and the way you view yourself projects to it's others. Everything. everything. They see it as well. So he says, I'm so starstruck. I'm hiding in corners. I'm just like shoulder slump. I'm not talking to anyone. And he was like, and of all the stars there, the one I'm most starstruck by is Denzel Washington. Right. He said, Denzel walks by, gives him a head nod. So he said, he head nods him. And Denzel says, hey, act like you belong here. Woo! So Tyler was like, act like, like you, you belong. belong. So he says, in my mind, I'm sitting there. So it's reflecting on others, right? They see the insecurity that I have about being in the room uh, with these people. So I'm not saying anything. So he says, Denzel comes by. He says, those three words that changed everything. He said, act like you belong. That's one of three words. Act like you belong here, right? So the thing was, he said, no, I'm like, hold on, five five words. Words. Hey, like, that's a little more than three. Yeah, I, I ain't had no more coffee yet. Motivated. Yeah, yeah. So those, those five words, <laughs> come on, bro. So those five words, he says, change everything. So he yeah. says, what happens is, now I'm in conversation. He says, I ended up talking to Zell for like 40 minutes. Right? So what that reminded me is that you have to believe you belong in the room before others see it. Let me tell you this, dog. Your energy speaks for you before you even open your mouth. Right. Yeah. Your energy enters into a room before you even get there. Mm. And so I think one of the biggest things I read it this morning, dude, like one of the things is, is that you have to commit to the vision of who you know you are. It's a commitment. When you're committed to who you know you're called to be, there's this aura that's around you. There's this there's this energy that that begins to flow and we live in a generation now where and and this this going to go status quo and y'all weigh in on this cuz y'all know how I am. Um we live in this world where everybody's like, "Oh, you got to uh, you you got to go into all of these different meetings and conferences because somebody's somebody's gonna notice you when you mm -hmm. you, you get there and, and, and somebody's gonna see you and you're gonna meet that one golden person that's gonna change your whole life, bro. I call BS on that one, yeah. mm -hmm. and let me tell you why. Because the people who are really doing it are not sitting there trying to look for somebody. Who, who can be next, they find you when you're doing what you do. Yeah. They find you when you're working in your craft. They notice when you're out there and you're constantly posting content out there, somebody's going to look for you. And I think it was one of y'all cats who was like, yo, I've been putting all this content out and I didn't know X, Y, Z, somebody, was it was a Waka or mm -hmm. somebody, was that you? Or was mm -hmm. that, one of y'all was like, yo, somebody hit me in my, in my box. Like, yo, bro, I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Mm -hmm. I, I see where how you move and keep going. And so I feel like some of the times we we just want to sit in like like a Tyler Creator moment mm -hmm. and and wait for somebody. Sometimes God graces you with a Denzel who hits you up right. like yo, act like you belong here. But I feel like you have to you have to truly know and be committed to that vision and know that I got a seat at that table. And when you mm -hmm. get out and go do what you're supposed to be doing, then you are gonna draw the eyes. To I think you should say like yeah. the teacher shows up and the students ready, right? Exactly. You got to prepare behind the scenes. You in my head, bro. Yeah. I was literally. That teacher that. shows up when, when you're, you're doing driving, the work behind the scenes. When you're yeah. driving down the street, if you see someone by their broken down car, you're just like, dang it. Right. Right. Yeah. Down. But if they're outside trying to push it by themselves, Come on. you're going to pull over, park, and try to push it with them. Yo, that's such a good example, bro. Because how many times do you drive past someone that's just inside the car, hood up, like our car broke it's down? Nothing. 
But you at a red light, you see somebody out pushing that thing. Get to work. I'm gonna you help get out and help them. Yeah, like he's trying something. to do something. I'm gonna get out and help this brother. It's the energy versus yeah. the people sitting in their car with the hazard lights. Hoping <laughs> yeah, somebody, on the phone with AAA. Like, 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 you see my hazard lights everybody on, bro. Like, and they just sitting there like, mm. like okay, okay. So so segue this or or, or even alley oop this to areas in our life, whether that's a relationship that mm -hmm. we talked about initially, whether that's you saying, man, I know I want to go do these things. I got this dream. I got this vision. I got this company. I want to be able to do that. We're waiting for somebody else to come and save us mm -hmm. sitting in the cars of life with our hazard lights on. Mm -hmm. and, and and we just wondering why and you're watching people zoom past Ooh. and you're like you don't see my hazards you don't see my <laughs> sos you don't see <laughs> right. i ain't hanging out with y'all because i ain't got no bread like you mm -hmm. ain't you ain't seeing me not posting or the the cryptic messages on social media that's mm -hmm. letting you know why aren't you reading my mind yeah we don't like to help people who don't need help we like to help people who actually need help that's just the way humans are wired mm -hmm. so if you get out there and back to stephen covey if you are proactive and getting busy, that's gonna be your language to the world, your 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 beacon. I need help. This what, is what I do. What is proactive? It out there. Proactive is I'm not waiting for somebody else to tell me. I'm not waiting for someone else to mm -hmm. give me anything. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start. I'm going uh, to from, we help from people nothing that are trying start. to help themselves. We want to help people that are trying to help themselves. We right. I'm we not want to help yeah. nobody who's taking advantage. You know what I mean? I mean, I think it's just human nature because all of us can relate to a struggle, yeah. right? At some point in our Ooh. lives, we've all been down at some point. Yeah. So um I'm trying not to be like, you know, I don't want to be the, the Debbie Downer, but Come on, dog, bring it in. I'm just saying, like, so for me personally, the people that are outside just holding a sign rarely get my money. The guy who comes up to me and says, you got some work I could do. I'll cut yeah. your grass. I'll pull your weeds. I don't have any work, bro, but here's $20 because yeah, you out trying you. to get it. Right. Yeah, because you out here trying to hustle. I respect that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's so that's so big because I, I agree 100% that the people that are taking action are, in my opinion, the ones that get the most, the most help. Okay, so then we're talking about taking action. action. We're talking about, you talked about massive action, Cam. Dips, you talked about people wanting to help people who are actually moving. Like, yeah. if you're moving, then I want to help you. You talked about being proactive in life mm -hmm. um, versus, I think you mentioned it from Stephen Covey's book as well, mm -hmm. versus being reactive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Proactive is when you're taking, you're taking, you're, you're happening to life. Yeah. You are mm. taking your steps and you're happening to life. Reactive mm -hmm. is life is happening, happening to you, you. Yeah. right? So now... When you're proactive, what I hear you saying is you're on the offense. You're on the offense. And so many of us live our lives on the defense. Ooh. So I stay in this relationship because I don't want to get hurt trying to put myself out there. Mm -hmm. I stay in this job that's paying me less than what I am because I want to defend what it is I have. Instead of taking that offensive charge to go mm -hmm. take territory, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And check this. If you're on defense all the time, you can still get scored on. But if you're always on defense... You can't score. You don't score. You don't put no points up on defense. And the only way you can do it, watch this, is if you become proactive and say, I'm going after that ball. I'm going to give me a pick six. Thank I'm going to intercept this ball. Thank you. But that requires you to be proactive. proactive. Okay. Yep. So, so if that's the case, and we're coming to this idea and this concept, you mentioned two things, and I, I feel like this is so huge because what we're talking about in this episode mm -hmm. is, is how do you go after the things that you want? We've talked about what are the things that stop us? And this could be another three part episode and take us into next season right. uh, of what, what stops us. Mm -hmm. But, but I really want to leave everybody who's watching from Africa, from mm -hmm. Europe, from, from all across the United States who, who tune into us. They want to know the golden question. This is where I'm at. It's like, yo, so how do I go after the things I want? You mentioned something dips and you're so big about your, 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 the entrepreneur underdog, right? You, you're, you're so big. You're, you're one of the greatest strategists that I know when it comes to doing, you're like, Hey dog, watch this. I'm going to become a bestseller on my book. You want your right. book became the bestseller, right? Yo bro. Right. Hey, we're going to do this. This podcast going to blow. Watch this. Our last podcast, mm -hmm. we, we cracked like, you know, over, over 10,000 views mm -hmm. that we're just cranking in and doing that. So when we talk about learning how to go after what we want, give us a tangible, how do we do that? <sighs> All right, first off, I want to get a quick story. Um, shout out to my boy, Javon. Javon, when I start, I used to work out with him. Yeah, man. Yeah. When the I human used to action work figure. Out, the human <laughs> action figure. Right. When I used to work out with Javon, two things stuck out to me. I would say, yo, what do you focus on when you're lifting this weight? 
and he would go lifting it. Mm, dial in. And one day he was like, what do you want to do? I was like, man, I want to be a speaker. He was like, speak. <laughs> that easy. That I was like, easy. yeah, but I got to, you know, where do I call him up? Tell him I'm a speaker. I want to speak. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we make things too complicated. Talk about it. We just got to do it. Do it. it. <laughs> we make it too complicated. We just got to do it. So yeah. get busy no matter what it is. Get so that's busy. the first thing. Second thing is you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. But the person that's done it already, they know all of it. Right. Along with what to avoid. And, and along with what to <laughs> right. avoid. So right. Cam taught me this. Don't matter what you know if you don't apply. Mm-hmm. Get five books. Read those five books on the topic. Reach out to somebody who's done it. Say, hey, how did you do this? How did you do that? And you should be touching five people every day. So those are the five people you're going to consume their content right. so that you get into the mind frame, the ethos, the, the linguistics that they're in. That should be, in my opinion, Jesus. You should be reading right. your Bible every day. And then who's... Who's, are you controlling your feed? Are you just mm. swollen looking at girls? Are you looking at things that don't really sell us? What, what are you? Fellas? What are you? Or does your feed have content that's going to teach you and motivate Ooh, that's so you big, bro. going towards that's so what big. you really want to do in life? What are you consuming life? on a what daily are you basis? Consuming? In high school, hoopers hung out with hoopers. Ah. The, 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 the people who wore black, the, the emos hung out with yeah, the emos. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and the band hung out with the band. Mm-hmm. Who are you hanging out with? Ooh, that's so far, dips. Either digitally or who are you hanging out with digitally? Who are you hanging out with digitally? Uh, that that and I think that's that's a big thing when you talk about that because that that does that weighs into that's what the Bible says: protect your ear gates and your eye gates. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that that's what comes into your soul. And so sometimes I love that how we're not doing it. Mm-hmm. Something that that was really big that you talked about, Cam, is you talked about taking massive action. You talked about mm-hmm. number one, just doing it, yeah. and 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 then finding the people who have done it so you can avoid roadblocks and and downfalls so when we talk about avoiding roadblocks and downfalls how do you begin something when you feel like you don't have when you don't have the material or the financial gains to be able to do it dips dips touched on it and him and i talked about this a lot and shout out to justin sap man because back in the like-minded day jay sap Sap, i'm like-minded man we used to really dial in on this a lot and we talked about a lot was that reading the material ain't good enough right Like Dips mentioned, you want to start a new endeavor. You want to go out. You want to be a better speaker. You can read books on public speaking. I want to be able to to control my anger better. You can read books on that, right? Watch videos. YouTube is Google. Mm -hmm. All the info you need is in front of you. Go get it. That's what you should be using that phone for, right? Right. So the thing is, just reading the material or talking to the people isn't good enough, right? You could watch all the the Bros to Man podcasts. If you're not taking concepts that we're talking about that we've learned through experience and applying it, you're not doing anything with wow. you have to apply the information which ties back into uh a massive action. Yeah. You know what I mean? So dips, we're talking stories about being broke, career change, how to create new plans. Take his principles and apply them. You're talking about an identity change, facing 16, 17 years of life in prison and came out flourishing as an entrepreneur and being yeah. an identity coach, right? right, right becoming right. the people, becoming the person that society said to stay away from yeah, yeah, and yeah. now they're coming to you to seek the knowledge, right? right, right. Take my experiences and learn from them. Right. So we said another episode that if you love somebody, the best thing you can do is to share your experiences with them so that right. they don't have to go so through it. it. Right. Yeah. And that's what people who are successful want to do. Entrepreneurs want to do that. Billionaires that he's met want to do that. They want to pour into you right Mm -hmm. but again you got to take that information you have to be able to apply it so massive action is for one and two like you said you have to grab life you have to do life not let life do you right 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 you know what i mean so get out of the victim mentality hello right and stop looking for the superhero and get your butt in the phone booth and become the superhero, right? Hello! That is how you control... That's a tweetable. It's a hero's journey. Hey, it's it's that a part hero's of the, that's journey, That's the part that bro. you actually hit screen record and put that back Come up on, on now, your Instagram man. right now. It's, it's about controlling the narrative. You are the author of your own life. Each day is a blank page. Yeah. Write your story. You know yeah. what I mean? Share your story. And you're going to change lives in the process, man. That's all it's about. People relate like to stories, bro. Dude, that's real. And I think if I had to add to this, it would be 
you got to begin to build trust with yourself again. Mm. And and how you build trust with yourself, I think Socrates and Aristotle said it. Socrates um, mentioned, he says, how you begin to build trust is by doing internal exploration. And when you talk about internal exploration, that's basically saying, like you said, man, I want to go and start this, this business. Or I'll give it a, a, a different example. If I want to build a house and I looked at all the videos, I read all the books, internal exploration is you literally ex exploring everything inside of you to determine whether or not you have the ability to do that. So how do you do it? You read all the books on how to build a house. What do you do? You lay the first brick. Come on. After you lay the first brick, then you lay the other brick. Before you know it, you'll have a whole foundation. Now you've built trust with yourself mm -hmm. that you can do the process that gets you to where you need to go. So when you talked about just doing it, that's internal exploration. You've explored internally what you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. That was what Socrates talked about. Mm -hmm. Aristotle went another step uh, further and he talked about external imprinting mm. and so if i'm ever going to start moving i need external imprinting in other words i'm going to look at all the people who have done it before me and borrow their confidence i'm going to live off of the story of kobe who came back from uh him tearing his uh achilles. His, achilles his achilles and, and watch that that movie muse mm -hmm. and look at him overcoming it i'm gonna borrow his confidence from what i've seen and i'm gonna externally look at all the imprints of people in history mm -hmm. around my life in my in my space mm -hmm. uh who've left toxic relationships who've done it now i'm gonna borrow their confidence have that external imprinting around me so that in those moments where i feel like i can't do it i lean on their confidence until I have enough of my own while I'm doing internal exploration and building. And what you begin to do is you can begin to trust yourself to do the moves that are necessary to get you to where you go. And once you begin to trust yourself, you start building confidence. Rhythm is, rhythm is everything. Every you know, for those of us who are sports folks, you got your shooting guard having a bad game. He's mm -hmm. over 10. He go talk to the coach. What's the coach tell him? Keep shooting. Keep shooting. He doesn't, keep shooting. he doesn't say start passing the ball. You're missing everything. He says Man, keep, keep shooting. Because once we get out of that rut, and you get into that rhythm, you're like from the rut to the rhythm. Rut to the right rhythm, to bro. Rhythm. Keep That's shooting. Cold. You're in a bad season. You're throwing up brick after brick, L after L. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. You're gonna find your rhythm. One Keep of them shooting. go. One of them gonna go in. I'm going. And, and once you, that first one goes in, it's a wrap. Okay, a so rap. you know this. So I want to. I want to drop this real quick, and I want you to give us as we as we really look at this this episode. I want I want all of us to to, to really focus in. Let's dial in just a, a tad bit. And in this moment, if you could give somebody the golden key that you would possess, that you could give them to live the life that they desire and not settle for less, to break golden handcuffs, what would you give? Man, just get to work and be patient and realize that right now, if you're going through it, if that identity gap is really long, then that's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obstacles are really just opportunities because when you take obstacles and you transform them into what you want, Talk to on the other on end bars. is the result you want. Literally putting obstacles on your calendar is the key to creating the life you want. So just realize wherever you are, you're on the bottom of that mountain, this is the obstacle. And if you triumph if you win if when you, you when you win if sure. you get win, to the win. top of that mountain like jeff said building each brick and then when that house is done you get to stand there and say i built this <laughs> <laughs> brick, <laughs> bop, brick, <laughs> brick, bop, brick. Oh, baby. all right so look i'm gonna toss it to you cam give give them that golden key bro Man, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep it real short bro i'm gonna let you close this out all i'm gonna say is you don't know you don't need anyone's permission but your own to be great yeah. you don't need people to agree with you they don't have to support the dream. They don't have to like the dream. Mm -hmm. You want to do it, stop looking for yeses, get to work. End the story. That's Man, it. Man, I love that. And that's, that's it. real. Take when, action. And when, you're, and when your dissatisfaction becomes bigger than your creature comforts and habits, Ooh. then you're going to move. You're going to move. And so evaluate that. But yo, check yo. this out, fellas. We got another episode. Episode six in the book. Six in the book, man. We appreciate you guys. Make sure that you guys are following and subscribing like to the Bros to Men podcast. Drop a comment. Like, drop yeah. them comments because we want to know what you guys are doing. Make sure you're following us right. on social media. Go ahead. Give them your Instagram. Cameron K underscore Prasad, P-E-R-S-A-U-D. Holla at me. Beautiful. Debs, give it to him. R-O-Y underscore R-E-D-D -D Roy underscore Red. And I'm at J-E-F-F-T-O-S-B-O-R-N-E. Jeff T. Osborne. Again, we love y'all. Appreciate y'all yeah, tuning in. Until next time. Hey. Stay up. Go do something great this week.